Chernobyl disaster is still counted as the most tragic catastrophic chapter in history. It was the day the small village of Chernobyl saw death in front of them. On April 26, 1986, Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Pripyat, Ukraine, suffered a catastrophic explosion during a late night safety test. The explosion released vast amounts of radioactive isotopes, including iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90. Such radiation penetrated deep into soil layers and water systems, making agricultural lands good for nothing. The radiation acted like an invisible hand, reshaping the landscape and rewriting history with each passing moment. The biodiversity of the region is what suffered the most. Plants turned reddish-brown and died from acute radiation exposure, leading to the area being named the Red Forest. According to the United Nations, approximately 4,000 people surrendered to death after long-term radiation exposure. At the same time, wildlife surprisingly thrived in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, where species like wolves, lynxes, and Shawalski's horses remained unaffected. The disaster unfolded during a safety test at Reactor 4, designed to evaluate the plan's ability to maintain cooling functions during a power outage. However, some critical errors, along with RBMK design flaws, like positive void coefficient resulted in an uncontrolled nuclear reaction. It is said that operators, under pressure to complete the test, disregarded standard safety protocols and deactivated key safety systems. What makes the Chernobyl incident different from others is that the site remains a symbol of nuclear energies' risks. The response to such an incident was ineffective for many reasons. Over 49,000 residents of Pripyat were evacuated within 36 hours. To prevent further radiation release, the Soviet Union constructed a sarcophagus to encase Reactor 4. There was a revision of global nuclear safety protocols where international agencies like the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, implemented stricter safety standards. March 11th, 2011 was a day of trial for Japan. It was on that day nature decided to challenge the most out of the people of Japan. The first stroke of shock was hit by a massive 9.0 magnitude earthquake followed by a devastating tsunami. This led to a severe nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that Japan never witnessed before. Around a 20 kilometer radius around the plant was evacuated. This evacuation zone covered an area larger than the entire city of Paris. The environmental consequences it brought were too much to handle. Large quantities of radioactive water containing cesium-137 and iodine-131 were released into the Pacific Ocean, affecting marine ecosystems. Those contaminants made farmland unusable and crops unsafe for consumption. Certain wildlife populations declined due to mutations. The economic impact, along with the cleanup costs, were estimated at over $200 billion. That's more than the GDP of over 130 countries combined, a financial powerhouse in its own right. Coming to the chain reaction of events that happened that day, the earthquake caused an automatic shutdown of the reactors, as per standard safety protocols. But the tsunami with waves over 15 meters high overwhelmed the plant's protective seawalls, which resulted in a severe flooding of the facility. We're talking about waves as big as a five-story building crashing over the seawalls. Without adequate cooling, the fuel rods in the three reactors overheated, leading to hydrogen explosions causing the release of radioactive materials. The Fukushima accident was something that prompted many countries, including Germany, to accelerate plans to phase out nuclear energy. But it always remains a lesson for Japan. The effort that the nation took to decontaminate affected areas was commendable. As a part of reviewing the energy policies, most of its nuclear reactors were temporarily closed, and it was a cue for nations to reevaluate global nuclear safety standards. The meltdown that happened at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station in Pennsylvania on March 28, 1979, is considered to be the most serious accident in U.S. commercial nuclear power plant history. The public concern it spread was far more than its environmental harm. Small amounts of radioactive gases and iodine were released into the atmosphere creating public fear. However, the exposure levels were too low to cause any measurable health effects. But the news of the meltdown spread like a wildfire among the people, making them question their own existence. People even started to run for their life as nuclear accidents are infamous for taking dozens of lives. The Three Mile Island accident resulted from a combination of equipment failures and design flaws with a pinch of human error. A pressure relief valve that was left open allowed coolant to escape from the reactor core. To add more risk to it, 
The emergency cooling system was shut down due to some miscommunication. This resulted in the overheating of the core followed by its melting. The cleanup of Reactor 2 took over a decade and cost approximately $1 billion, making it an expensive one for the US. Imagine spending $1 every second. It would take you over 31 years just to reach $1 billion. That's the staggering cost of cleaning up the Three Mile Island accident. What makes the incident even more surprising is the fact that the accident occurred just days after the release of the film The China Syndrome, a fictional movie about a nuclear meltdown. Even though the reactor was eventually stabilized, mishandling that happened exposed the critical weakness in reactor design and operator training. Taking note of it, the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission implemented stricter safety protocols that included improved operator training and improvised reactor designs. Many planned reactors were cancelled out due to safety standards leaving greater transparency and accountability in nuclear operations across the country. The Three Mile Island accident may not have caused widespread environmental damage, but its impact on nuclear safety and policy has had a greater impact on the US's nuclear development. The Kishtim disaster, one of the earliest and most severe nuclear accidents, took place in the Soviet Union. It was on September 29, 1957, the Mayak Production Association, a plutonium production site in the Soviet Union, had to experience the unexpected. A chemical explosion in a waste storage tank released vast quantities of radioactive material, leaving thousands of people in a life or death situation. The explosion created the Eastern Rural Radioactive Trace, the EURT, the contaminated area of 20,000 square kilometers. This contamination spread across an area as vast as the entire state of New Jersey. Thousands of residents had to suffer acute radiation sickness, which is a long-term health issue. The wildlife had to go through population declines, while entire villages were abandoned due to contamination. Now, what happened at Kishtim on that day? A storage tank containing highly radioactive liquid waste was supposed to be at a certain temperature, but a failure in its cooling system caused the contents to overheat. Such heat resulted in a chemical explosion, releasing an estimated 20 million curies of radioactive material into the environment. A devastating release of energy that could have powered millions of homes, but instead, it unleashed destruction across the land. But did you know the disaster was unknown outside of the Soviet Union until 1976? Yes, it was later exposed by a Soviet biologist, Zoros Bedvedev, in a publication. The policy of secrecy choked the news within. Even the residents were not allowed to talk about it, as even the walls can hear the drastic consequences of that accident. The strict secrecy policy of the Soviet Union severely delayed the initial responses. But learning from that mistake, the government was ready to make some improvements in the nuclear policy. Monitoring systems were implemented to keep a check on nuclear waste. Stricter safety upgrades were put forth to tackle future accidents. The Kishtim disaster did underscore the consequences of mismanaged nuclear waste but it left room for prioritizing secrecy over public safety. It was the day Cumbria saw the end day in front of them. On October 10th, 1957, a fire broke out in the graphite core of Reactor 1 at the Windscale Nuclear Facility in Cumbria, UK. Known as the Windscale Fire, it is the most severe nuclear incident in British history. The fire resulted in the release of large amounts of iodine-131 that contaminated milk supplies in nearby regions. The reactor was like a sleeping giant, suddenly awakened and breathing fire. Its impact felt far and wide, as if the very air crackled with tension. The full extent of environmental and health impacts is still unknown due to limited data and the secrecy surrounding the event. However, the disaster unfolded during an unkneeling process that released store energy from the reactor's graphite core. It is a process that prevents the reactor core from being unstable. However, the monitoring equipment somehow failed to detect excessive heat buildup. This resulted in the ignition of the graphite core. Efforts to cool the reactor with air only fanned the flames, intensifying the fire. The core glowed up in heat, ready to engulf anything and everything that will come in its way. The plant burned for three days, releasing radioactive iodine-131, polonium-210, and other isotopes spreading contamination beyond the immediate vicinity of the plant. The historical significance of this incident is that it was overshadowed by the Cold War nuclear arms race, as wind-scale reactors were initially built to produce weapons-grade plutonium and the facility was later renamed Sellafield. But taking lessons from such an unexpected disaster, Cumbria took a new turn in better preparation. The UK government implemented stricter safety regulations, which included enhanced reactor monitoring. 
The international nuclear safety practices were evaluated with respect to reactor designs and emergency preparedness. The wind scale fire serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that come with nuclear technology, but it also paved the way for better safety measures. On January 3rd, 1961, the stationary low power reactor number one, SL-1, a U.S. Army experimental nuclear reactor located in Idaho, suffered a catastrophic failure. It was something that the U.S. Army wasn't ready for. A manual error during maintenance was the cause of such a massive explosion. Small amounts of radioactive material were released into the surrounding environment while the reactor building was filled with it. The public was not exposed to harmful levels of radiation as the reactor was located in a remote area. But did a maintenance mistake result in such a massive meltdown? An operator manually withdrew a central control rod too far and that's where it began. That rod was critical to regulate the nuclear reaction within the reactor core. Therefore, such a withdrawal caused an immediate and uncontrollable power surge, generating intense heat and pressure. The heat caused the reactor's coolant water to vaporize, triggering a steam explosion. The explosion was a sudden burst of chaos, like a balloon popping unexpectedly, leaving a lasting impression on safety measures, a reminder of how quickly things can change. The explosion ejected excess radiation, causing the deaths of all three operators on site. The SL-1 accident is the only US reactor incident to directly result in fatalities, making it a tragic milestone in nuclear history. However, that incident was not enough to curtail the nuclear aspirations of the US. It still remains as a stark reminder of nuclear power risks. Reactor designs were modified to prevent single control rod withdrawal from causing accidents. Operator training programs were overhauled to ensure a better understanding of safety protocols. It was the incident that underscored the importance of oversight by organizations like the Atomic Energy Commission. Though its environmental impact was limited, the legacy of SL-1 in the shape of nuclear safety protocols has a long life. September 30th, 1999, remains a nightmare for Ibaraki Prefecture, Japan. It was on that day that the Tokaimura Nuclear Facility in Ibaraki Prefecture experienced a severe criticality accident. Improper handling of uranium fuel resulted in a fire that had far more complications. Two workers closest to the reaction suffered lethal radiation doses, leaving them to suffer for too long. Over a hundred people, including plant workers and nearby residents, were exposed to high levels of radiation exposure even though it didn't spread widely. The major reason being the accident was safety lapses. Workers manually mixed uranium oxide with nitric acid in a stainless steel bucket, which was a violation of safety protocols. It was to save time, despite the risk of a critical reaction. They didn't know the invisible threat of the radiation was coming up. A danger was lurking in the air. The excessive uranium concentration in the bucket exceeded the critical threshold, initiating an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. This was a silent threat lurking in the shadows, ready to emerge when least expected, catching everyone off guard like a predator waiting patiently in the dark. The reaction emitted intense gamma and neutron radiation, exposing workers in the room and nearby residents. This was the first nuclear accident in Japan's history to result in fatalities, drawing significant public attention and scrutiny. But such an incident was Japan's cue to revisit safety standards. They revised the nuclear safety regulations, including stricter oversight and improved worker training. Some of the procedural guidelines were made mandatory to follow, emergency response protocols were enhanced, ensuring quicker evacuations while carrying out public awareness. The Tokamari accident serves as a cautionary tale that echoes the importance of safety protocols in the handling of nuclear material. In September 1987, the Brazilian city of Golania became the site of one of the worst radiological accidents in history. A radioactive source, carelessly left in an abandoned hospital, was stolen by unsuspecting individuals. Their mismanagement resulted in one of the most drastic nuclear accidents. Four people, including a six-year-old girl, died from excessive radiation, while hundreds more suffered radiation injuries. Dozens of homes were demolished, and approximately 3,500 cubic meters of radioactive waste were collected and securely stored, a volume equivalent to filling about 14 large shipping containers. What made the situation even worse was the discrimination faced by the survivors. Over 112,000 people were monitored for radiation exposure, with nearly 250 identified as significantly contaminated. The Galania accident occurred due to the complete negligence of radioactive materials. A teletherapy unit containing cesium-137, a highly radioactive isotope, was left in an abandoned hospital after its use. Just like a treasure chest, glittering with promise but cursed with danger for those who dared to open it, the radioactive source was a beacon of both hope and peril.
Two scavengers, unaware of the device's true nature, stole it. They thought their life would be different the minute they found the secret behind the machine. Little did they know that Allure is leading to a tragedy. A dismantling from their side resulted in the release of cesium-137, which appeared as a glowing blue powder. The incident exposed the dangers of poor regulation and management of radioactive materials. Taking note of it, Brazilian authorities came up with stricter regulations for the storage, disposal, and management of radioactive materials. Efforts were made to educate the public about the dangers of radiation while supporting the survivors to face the trauma that they were suffering. The Galania accident stands as an example of how negligence in managing radioactive materials can lead to widespread devastation. Which nuclear accident story impacted you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let us know if you'd like to see a part 2 exploring more nuclear events. Join us next time as we delve deeper into the events that have shaped our world, because every nuclear accident has a story worth telling.